Well, in an effort to keep making progress, I have decided to install or do a, a fit up of the pressure tank and, and put together a bunch of the piping and electrical into the temporary well house because we have a foot of snow on the ground, we're all snowed in and we're getting more snow over the next seven days where we're, we're gonna have several feet of snow. So I'm not gonna be able to go out to the property and install this like I wanted to and then install the tank. So and in an effort to make some progress, we're gonna go ahead and put the tank together, put the plumbing together in pieces so that we can put it all together on my trailer, take it out there and hopefully speed along the installation out there. Right about there should work. So we've got the pressure tank in here. Uh, it, it'll be slid back against the wall. But one of the things that I'm working on is putting together every single component I possibly can here in the shop. Um, basically because we're getting multiple feet of snow outside and I can't go out to the property and work. So we're going to make as much progress as we can in here. And some of the stuff I want to go over is how this gets set up. Uh, the components that go into it how, they be, how they're assembled, and then how we are going to put them into smaller assemblies in order to take them out to the property and put them together quicker out there once some of the snow goes away. The bottom uh, coming off of that, it happens to be this adapter, which is an inch and a quarter. This is a pressure tank adapter. This part threads into fitting, there's a 90 degree fitting down in this hole in the bottom of this. So this goes inside of here and threads into that 90 degree fitting. Now, pressure tanks are usually mounted somewhat up off the ground uh, on cinder block, on cinder block sometimes, on a metal framework. Um, in this case, because this is gonna be a temporary enclosure, it's just gonna be sitting on the plywood. However, when I go to hook it up, I'll be able to slide the tank forward to have this hole right over the edge so that when I go to spin this in, the parts will clear because I have this gap underneath. Now, that's important because all the little things that go on this adapter. Now this comes as a kit, I'll put the link in the description. So this adapter, which is a pressure tank T assembly, this is an inch and a quarter. It comes with a relief valve. So this end threads into the adapter and this is where the water would come out if this were to blow. A zero to 100 pressure gauge threads into the adapter a four inch piece of quarter inch pipe. Now this is important because it connects this pressure switch. So there'll be electrical coming in and coming out and that goes to the controller. And on the bottom of this, this little pipe thread gets pipe tape put on there, threaded into the bottom. And then this will get threaded into the adapter. This is what controls your well. And then a dump valve. So all these components get threaded into this adapter. Now, I'm gonna be able to put all of these components together onto this adapter because when I go out to install this, I will be able to slide the tank over, install this into the bottom, slide the tank back in place, and we'll be all done. If I didn't have this gap or this overhang to work off of, I wouldn't be able to do it that way. I'd have to raise this tank up, which would be a problem because the roof will be installed. Just know that if you're doing this permanently in your house, this should be up off the ground. It's very important to note that the pressure switch itself is required to be 12 inches off of any concrete floor or any floor that could see water. So if this is in your garage, which this will be in the long term for my mother-in-law, I'll have to put a longer piece of pipe or the cinder blocks will have to raise the tank up high enough to allow this controller box to be 12 inches off the ground. That's per the elect National Electric Code. Well, it's time to start assembling this thing. So we've got the pressure tank T adapter assembly. Somebody can, I guarantee, tell me the actual name for this thing down in the comments.
So this is what your T assembly should look like. You should have a dump valve to drain your tank, a relief valve for overpressure protection, a gauge, which fits, fits the range of your pressure tank. In this case, it's a zero to 100. A pipe nipple to a pressure switch. This is a 40 to 60 square D uh, pump troll pressure switch, which there'll be wires coming in one side and out the other. This will all be threaded in via this connection to the bottom of the pressure tank. This is the assembly we're basically going to end up with. So we put together this and we put this fitting on. The rest of the stuff is not put together tight or glued yet. However, we're going to cut a bunch of the short nipples that are necessary in order to put the valve in place. This is a check valve. This has a spring inside of it in the back and it pushes a plunger. So the water comes in this side. You can see there's a flow arrow here. Comes through the check valve out this side into the pressure tank. So from the well into the pressure tank. The way I'm putting it together on the table it would be like this. From the well to the pressure tank. So it would come in this side and come out this side. It's very important that you never install a valve between the pressure tank and the wellhead. If you were to install a valve up in your pump house or anywhere in line between the, the well, the motor, the pump, and the pressure tank, and that valve were to get shut, you could potentially have the pressure in your tank drop, which would turn on the well, but the well would be pushing water up against a closed valve, and it would keep pushing that until either the pump burnt out or something failed. The piping failed, a connection failed, something failed. It's very, very important that you never install a normal valve that could be potentially shut between the pressure tank and the pump. This is a check valve. It's a one-way check valve. It's very, very important that this be installed correctly. If you were to accidentally install this backwards and turn your system on, you would start pressurizing the tank, but you wouldn't be. The well would be on, the pump would be on, pressurizing up against the back of this valve. It would be pushing against a shut valve. I cannot overemphasize the importance of making certain that this valve is installed the correct way with the flow arrow in the direction of the water. The water comes from the well to the house, or from the well to the pump tank, or however you want to look at that. But from the well, through the valve, and out the other side, make sure the arrow is in the correct orientation. I hear this all the time that thread tape has a right and a wrong way to install it. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a right and a wrong way as much as it's a okay way and a much better way. And that means that the tail of your tape is going the opposite direction of the way that it will thread in so that the tape will actually bind down into the threads without unraveling itself.
So now that we have a few of the assemblies put together, so this would come from the wellhead. So there'd be a 90, there'd be a piece of pipe, a one inch piece of pipe to a 90, which will go into the ground to the well eventually. So we'll say that goes here and the 90 is just out of screen. Then this will thread onto here. Now, because I'm gonna put a union on this, which is right here. So let me move this over for you guys. So this union will allow me to have that loose, right? And once we figure out the piece of pipe that goes between this bushing and this union tailpiece, that'll go in here, which will allow me to spin this entire assembly onto this piece of pipe once, this is, once the T assembly is installed. So this whole check valve assembly will spin, allowing me to install it. Now, you could just do all that and glue a joint in place, but I find that the unions make it easier for disassembly down the road and maintenance purposes. In order to check fit and get the lengths of pipe I need between the unions, we're gonna go ahead and install the T assembly. And then we're gonna slide the tank back in the position that it will be in when we have it installed. Which, unfortunately, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the T-assembly is lining up with these studs, which is a problem. It's always something, and it's never easy. However, in this application where this is temporary, we're gonna angle the tank so that the pipe hits back here on this side, and it actually goes in front of the stud on the other side. The tank is pretty close to the position it's going to be in. The alignment is going to work out pretty well. I've got, I've got enough space here. I'm going to go ahead and match mark the tank on the floor so I know where to put it back to. So that will tighten up a little bit more, quite a bit more actually. Okay, that's perfect. So I'll thread that thing on there and that'll come over another half an inch, which I have a half inch of gap around this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this pipe before I drill the hole in an effort to, it's a bummer, we're gonna have to come over here and we're gonna have to come up and kick over at a, at a 45. I'm gonna go ahead and thread it on until it just barely starts to bind, which is right about there.
All right, well, this is going to wrap up the temporary well house plumbing install. So we got the pressure switch, the relief valve, the dump valve, the gauge, the T-assembly, the one-way check valve, and all the piping associated with the temporary pump house installed. This is going to make it incredibly easy to take it out to the property and get it installed where it belongs. Um, with the snow on the ground outside, this was really the way to go for me. And you guys will see in an upcoming video how this all gets installed out throughout the property and how quickly that all goes. There's a whole bunch of takeaways in this video. The whole overview of the plumbing and the valves and how everything works the pressure tank for a well. It'll make a little more sense once we get the pressure tank hooked up out at the property. But until then, I appreciate you guys watching. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button. That always helps me out in the longer. Check out some of these other links. I'll have my house build and the garage build on my mother-in-law's property. Until next time, thanks for watching.